So I've been questioning about prayer a little, and um, I'm about to go over it. Like, I know there's a passage. I was looking for it. Actually, I think I found it in a prayer, but yeah, I think it comes from... It was either a prophet, a saint, or a monk who said you shouldn't be outside and not be like the ones who pray for notoriety. You should find in your room quiet solace with God, right? So I was thinking too about that, but then I started thinking like, what about Christ? Like, he did the Our Father outside. He did all his, his house wasn't built yet. He preached his news outside most of the times. And that was John's whole ministry too. Maybe it's offensive to people or things because of their beliefs and there's other people's beliefs that aren't. So I'm going to turn to my Christian source on this and I'm going to read a little bit about prayer and I'm going to try to figure out you know, how not to be hypocritical with it or wrong with it and do it correctly, right? Prayer. Communication with God, because God is personal, all people can offer prayers. However, sinners who have not trusted Jesus Christ for their salvation remain alienated from God. So while unbelievers may pray, they do not have the basis for a rewarding fellowship with God. They have not met the conditions laid down in the Bible for effectiveness in prayer. Wow. Christians recognize their dependence upon the Creator. They have every reason to express gratitude for God's blessings but they have far more reason to respond to God than this. They responded to the love of God for them. God's love is revealed through the marvelous incarnation of the life of Christ, his atoning provisions at the cross, his resurrection, as well as his continuing presence through the Holy Spirit. Prayer cannot be replaced by devout good works in a needy world. Important as service to others is, at time we must turn away from it to God, who is distinct from all things and over all things. Neither should prayer be thought of as a mystical experience in which people lose their identity in infinite reality. Effective prayer must be a scripturally informed response of persons saved by grace to the living God who can hear and answer on the basis of Christ's payment and penalty which sinners deserve. As such, prayer involves several important aspects. Okay, faith. The most meaningful p prayer comes from a heart and place in its trust in the God who has acted and spoken in Jesus of history and the teaching of, this, of the Bible. God speaks to us through the Bible, and we in turn speak to him in trustful, believing prayer. Assured by the scripture that God is personal, living, active, all-knowing, all-wise, and all-powerful, we know that God can hear and help us. A confident prayer life is built on the cornerstone of Christ's work and words shown by the prophets and apostles and the spirit-inspired writings of the Bible. Worship. In worship, we recognize what is the highest worth, not ourselves, others, or our work, but God. Only the highest divine being deserves our highest respect. Guided by scripture, we set out values in accord with God's will and perfect standards. Before God's angels hide their faces and cry, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, Isaiah 6.3. Confession. Awareness of God's holiness leads to the consciousness of our own sinfulness. Like the prophet Isaiah, we exclaim, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips and dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah 6, 5. By sinning, we hurt ourselves and the closest to us. But first of all, and worst of all, sins against God. Psalm 51, 4. We must confess our sins to God to get right with Him. We need not to confess them to another being. We should confess them directly to God, who promises to forgive all of us of the unrighteousness. John one John one nine. That's interesting. I could also see, though, in my opinion, a confession to a preacher or someone as like a therapist, like someone someone you if you trust and confide in, it can feel um, easier. Let's keep going. Adoration. God is love. He has demonstrated his love through the gift of his Son. The greatest desire of God is that we love him with our whole being. Matthew twenty two thirty seven. Our love should be expressed as his has been expressed in both deeds and words. 
People sometimes find it difficult to say to others, to say to others and to God, I love you. But when love for God fills our lives, we will express our love in prayer to the one who is ultimately responsible for all that we are. Praise. The natural outgrowth of faith, worship, confession, and adoration is praise. We speak well with one whom we highly esteem and love. The one whom we respect and love above all, others naturally receives our highest commendation. We praise him for his mighty acts according to his, his excellent greatness, Psalms 152, and for his righteous judgments, Psalms 119, 164. For God himself, for his works and his words, his people give sincere praise. Thanksgiving. Are we unthankful because we think we have not received what we deserve? But if we got what we deserved, we would be condemned because of our guilt. As sinners, we are not people of God by nature. We have no claim upon his mercy or grace. Nevertheless, he has forgiven our sins, granted us acceptance and his people, and given us righteous standing and a new heart in life. And gratitude marks the ungodly. Romans one twenty one. Believers, in contrast, live thankfully. God has been at work on our behalf in countless ways, so in everything, even for the disciple that is unpleasant, we give thanks. Colossians 3.17 and in 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Dedicated Action Christ's example does not require us to withdraw from society, but to render service to the needy in the spirit of prayer. He wept over Jerusalem in compassionate prayer. And then he went to the city to give his life a ransom for many. Authentic prayer will be the house of courage and productivity as it was for the prophets and apostles. Request. Prayer is not only response to God's grace is brought to us in the life and work of Jesus and the teaching of scripture. It is also a request for our needs and the needs of others. For good reasons, God's holy and wise purpose does not permit him to grant every petition just as it is asked. Several hindrances to answer prayer are mentioned in the Bible. Iniquity in the heart, Psalm 66, 18. Refusal to hear God's law, Proverbs 28, 9. An estranged heart, Isaiah 29, 13. Sinful separation from God, Isaiah 59, 2. Waywardness, Jeremiah 14, 10 through 12. Offering unworthy sacrifices, Mal Malachi 1, 7, 9. Praying to be seen of men. Matthew 6, 5, 6, there it was, praying to be seen of men. Pride in fasting and tithing, Luke 18, 11, 14. Lack of faith, Hebrews 11, 6, and doubting or double-mindedness, James 4, 3. More positively, God has promised to answer our request when we start helping the hungry and afflicted. Isaiah 58, 9 through 10, when we believe that we will receive what we ask. Mark eleven twenty two through twenty four, when we forgive others. Mark eleven twenty five twenty six, and when we ask in Christ's name. John fourteen thirteen fourteen, and when we abide in Christ in His words. John fifteen seven, pray in the Spirit. Ephesians six eight, obey the Lord's commandments. John th one John three twenty two, and ask accordingly to His will. One John five. 14 through 15, until we have properly responded to God and his word, he cannot entrust us with his powerful resources. So there's, those are references right there of what can lead a prayer to be unanswered in the Bible and a prayer to be answered. Prayer is a request to a personal Lord who answers as he knows best. We should not think that we will always have success in obtaining the things for which we ask. In his wisdom, God hears and answers in the way that is best. Effectiveness. Prayer has power over everything. God can intelligently act in any part of the universe or human history. Although some people think prayer is a waste of time, the Bible declares that the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. James 5.16 Prayer meets inner needs. One who prays will receive freedom from fear. Psalms 118.5.6 Strength of soul. Psalms Guidance and satisfaction. Isaiah Deliverance from harm, Joel, reward, math, Matthew, good gifts, Luke, fruitfulness of joy, John, peace, Philippians, 
and freedom from anxiety, Peter. Sorry, I'm not giving the direct quotes. I'm just trying to keep it in length. Is prayer effective only in the inner lives of those who pray? No. Prayer can make a difference in the lives of others. Biblical writers believe prayer for others could result in greater wisdom and power. Ephesians. Inward strength. Knowledge of Christ's love. Fulfilling with God's fullness. Ephesians. Discernment. Approval of what is excellent. Filling with the fruits of righteousness. Philippians. Knowledge of God's will, spiritual understanding, a life pleasing to God, fruitfulness, endurance, patience, joy, Colossians, and a quiet, peaceable life, 1 Timothy 2, 1, 2. Love for one another and all people, holiness before God, Thessalonians, comfort and establishment in every good word and work. Thessalonians, love for God, steadfastness in Christ. Thessalonians, share, the sharing of one's faith, prom, promotion of the knowledge of all that is good. Philemon, equipment for every good work that is pleasing to God. Hebrews, some people who think prayer can affect others unquestions the ability of God to change his usual patterns in the physical world. But some prayers in the Bible change nature and physical bodies. Jabez prayed for an enlarged borders of protection from harm. Chronicles. Other people in the Bible prayed for deliverance from trouble. Psalms. Deliverance from both poverty and riches. Proverbs. Deliverance from the belly of the great fish. Jonah. Daily bread. Matthew. Preservation and sanction, sanctification of the spirit, soul, and body. The Lothians. The healing of the sick. James. And the ending of the rain and its beginning again, James. When the disciples prayed, the building around them shook, Acts 4, 3, 1. And the earthquake opened the doors of the prison, Acts 16, 25 through 26. Our prayers do make a difference in how God acts in the world. Now, this book doesn't necessarily say that you're supposed to be, that it can offend others, it which it could because as soon as I mention Jesus, in a way, related to God, other religions automatically are going to find offense to that anyways. So that would go for any prayer, and that's only because we put Jesus on that level. I understand about not being seen in prayer and that, but praying together in public or everything, that's what they call church. Uh, mature more people pray, basically, or speak of God, or talk, you know. So, this was just... So this was a compiled information, obviously very well done again by these guys in the dictionary. And uh, I just wanted to find it from the Christian perspective about if it's offensive or if it should only be done in private or, you know, if there's things like that. And I didn't get it from there. I'm sure that there's quotations and things, but we'll get to that. Thank you for listening and peace in my prayers will be with you.